Great. Thanks so much. And hello, everyone. And um, thanks to uh, my Vietnamese colleague um, for the previous presentation. It was so interesting to hear about activities that are, are happening um, over there. I'm sorry I can't be there in person today, but um, hopefully we'll um, continue to collaborate into the future. Um, so I'm here to give an overview of um, the Australian red meat industry's carbon neutral by 2030 initiative, which is known as CN30. And um, my name's Margaret Jewell. So I work for Meat and Livestock Australia, which is the organisation that, that Spencer, who was speaking in the previous session, um, is also from. Um, so today I'll go through three parts in my talk. Um, I'll, I'll firstly talk about what CN30 is and why we've made the investment. Um, then I'll talk about what the investments are that um, Meat and Livestock Australia, along with our partners, are um, pursuing in, um, in trying to achieve CN30. And then I'll finish with um, talking about some, some thoughts around um, coordination and collaboration between Australia and Vietnam, but also the rest of the world. So starting with CN30, um, CN30 is quite ambitious compared with some of the other targets that are being set around the world. It's a target for the Australian red meat industry to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. And I think Spencer mentioned um, in Australia, um, Meat and Livestock Australia look after the red meat industry and included in that are uh, beef, cattle, uh, sheep, meat and goats. So some of the other livestock species that have been mentioned earlier are within our remit and have got separate targets. Um, so MLA's role in CN30, we're the service provider for the red meat industry. So we are working with um, partners uh, that represent state and federal government departments, other research organisations, private enterprise and industry stakeholders in conducting research, development and adoption um, to develop technologies that the red meat industry can implement on farm and, and through other parts of the supply chain in order to try and reduce their net emissions and ultimately achieve a target where the net the emissions are balanced out by the equivalent amount of carbon stored in the landscape. So um, this is just a chart to or a slide to talk about um, some of the similarities and differences between the industry in Australia and in other parts of the world. Um, so firstly, the CN30 target was set in 2017 and it was off the back of um, our federal, federal scientific organisation, the CSIRO, who did a study um, that showed that achieving a carbon neutral position for the red meat industry in Australia was achievable, but was also very, very ambitious. Um, so um, it's recognised, it, CN30 recognises that we've got a very vast area of land that we produce livestock on in Australia. So it's about 355 million hectares, about half of the, the land mass of Australia is, is used for livestock production. Um, and that gives us a lot of area where there's opportunity to store carbon in trees and soil. Um, but it's also um, important to note that in Australia, um, I, I, I note that in Vietnam, the cattle herd is 6 million. Um, we've got slightly more cattle than that with 25 million head, um, 68 million goat, uh, sheep, sorry, and 4 million goats. And those numbers are a couple of years old. They're a bit bigger right now. Um, so, so we do have reasonably large um livestock numbers in comparison with some countries, but certainly when you look at Africa and India, they've got a lot more livestock than we have in Australia. So relative to a lot of other big livestock producing countries, we have a very small number of head. And very importantly, we've got a, a very small proportion of our livestock that's being produced in intensive systems or, or housed or feedlot systems. So the types of um, solutions that we need to develop in Australia need to be solutions that enable us to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from animals that are sort of grazing those really open, arid, harsh, climatic, um, extensive environments. 
We've developed a CN30 roadmap, which is sort of our, our plan of, of how we're intending to pursue the target. And we've got four key work areas, which are really categories for the types of investments that we're making in order to, to get to or to enable our industry to achieve a carbon neutral position. So I'll go through these um, individually shortly, but they are industry leadership, um, greenhouse gas emissions avoidance, which um, is, is the most um, heavy focus for us in Australia. Um, carbon storage and integrated management systems. And since 2017, um, with our partner contributions, um, the industry has invested over $140 million in um, research and development of technologies that, that would, would be um, for the purpose of pursuing a carbon neutral position. So I'll go through some of those investments um, individually now. So in the leadership building work area, this work area is all about how we're working with our producers or farmers in Australia to um, help them to understand why they, they should think about how carbon flows through their production systems and then what types of data they should try and be collecting that they can then use to demonstrate what their net carbon position is or what their environmental performance is. Um, so we've developed a number of online tools for our farmers to use. We've got some carbon accounting tools and also some carbon 101 e-learning modules. We're also piloting at the moment uh, a carbon edge program. So we have a lot of, we have a packages called edge packages that are sort of um, one and a half to two day workshops that consist of sort of up to 20 participants and a teacher that will deliver um, material to, to raise awareness and understanding about carbon, but also what types of activities farmers can implement in their farms to try and reduce their net carbon position. Um, that's where we're at now and moving forward, we are wanting to develop some longer term um, training and extension um, packages that are more about um, demonstration. So having producers involved with us to actually be adopting some of the new technologies that we're working on and then um, teaching their neighbours and fellow producers about what has worked and what hasn't worked to try and generate that widespread adoption that we'll need to be successful. In the carbon storage work area, the main activities that we're doing in this work area are to develop new technologies for remotely sensing the amount of carbon that's stored in soils, because it can be quite costly to measure soil carbon at the moment. And we're also looking at different types of activities and what the actual sort of scientifically um, robust uh, response in terms of increasing or decreasing soil carbon is to various grazing management practices. And we're also doing a lot of work with trees on farm. And our, our focus here is on how can we um, better incorporate um, trees into areas where livestock are produced so that they um, not only can store carbon um, in, the, in the vegetation, but also provide shade and shelter for livestock and by doing so improve their well-being and productivity. So as I said, the emissions avoidance area is the biggest focus for us. That's because um, we acknowledge that the more we can reduce the amount, it's it, the, the main um, GHG, of course, from livestock is methane. And the more that we can reduce it, the less we have to rely on storing carbon in the landscape to um, balance it out. Um, so 3NOC was mentioned in the previous um, talk. We're also focusing on another additive called asparagopsis, which is a seaweed. And we found that with both of these additives um, in a feedlot environment, we can reduce the amount of methane that's produced by about uh, uh, at least 80%. Um, now, I did say that most of our animals in Australia aren't in feedlots, they're in open grazing systems. So we're also very focused on how we can deliver those additives in grazing systems. And we're looking at 
licks and lick blocks, as well as boluses, which are um, like a, a capsule that can slowly release an additive over time, um, as well as um, delivering additives through water supply. Um, a lot of um, farmers in Australia also use genetics in their um, cattle herds and sheep flocks. And so we're doing some big projects to measure methane from large numbers of animals so that traits related to methane can be used in the current genetic selection indices that are available in Australia. And then we've also um, got a focus on the use of um, high quality pastures that include legumes um, and other best practice management um, practices to um, reduce methane as well. The integrated management systems work area is where we're trying to work with the federal government and um, end users of um, um, data such as um, the government um, banks, retailers and processors um, to try and um, enable producers to better demonstrate their performance um, to those end users. So we've, uh, I mentioned we've um, developed an MLA carbon calculator and we've got some other carbon accounting tools and resources. We also work with our federal government to provide um, information that will inform methodologies for um, carbon crediting project. So we have a, a pretty mature carbon market in Australia and um, met, um, under sort of defined methodologies, producers can demonstrate that they're um, reducing emissions or storing carbon and then generate Australian carbon credit units or ACUs and sell them to the government or the secondary market to, as, a, as a secondary source of income. Um, and then another piece of work we're doing is sort of going beyond carbon and looking at some of the other emerging areas of interest for demonstrating environmental sustainability and, in a, and developing platforms to enable farmers to put data into a platform that they can share with, with banks or retailers or processors. Um, a little bit further on the horizon, so um, we've sort of been looking at our target for since 2017 and, and we've, we're thinking about the next steps. Um, in addition to Threenop and Asparagopsis, we're starting to see some other new additives um, emerge and we're, we're wanting to do some research on those. But we're also looking at um, what sorts of compounds can be combined with additives um, in ways that it can increase the efficacy of the additive and also increase the um, potential for the additive to also have um, a weight gain benefit and so a productivity benefit so that it's not just reducing methane production, but it also has co-benefits of improved productivity as well. Um, we're looking at developing partnership investments in methane reduction and measuring devices. Um, and also partnerships to screen emerging solutions. We see a lot of potential solutions come across the desk and sometimes it can be tricky to, to find funding to put into each and every one of those. But if we could develop partnerships that can screen sort of multiple ones of those as they emerge, then I think that that could be pretty positive. So the types of things I've been seeing uh, micro devices, nanoparticles, and gene editing and genetic modification um, of microbial pasture and, and animal species. So just I'll quickly finish with some um, of my thoughts on coordination and collaboration. And, and this has been something that I think is a, a very common topic at the moment. Um, I think everybody's intending to coordinate and collaborate better. Um, and I think that there's a, a real opportunity to, to do this in a way um, that, that focuses on the strengths of as individual organisations and countries um, to assign tasks. And, and in that way, we can possibly prevent sort of duplication of research and be more open with the outcomes of our research and sharing them. Um, and I think that that will result in better outcomes for the planet. Um, so in Australia, we've, we've, we're really trying to focus on rumen emissions reduction for grazing animals. And we, we think we um, have good strengths based on the type of production systems that we have in Australia. And we've got a, a relatively 
um, sophisticated um, research environment as well. And so we're, we're really keen to keep focusing in on that and then to share the knowledge that we generate um, with, with all the other countries and organisations that might need it. We're, we're really in a phase where we're wanting to collaborate better across the globe. So with Vietnam, I'm, I'm very keen to keep talking um, with, with people at the conference today. We're, we're talking a lot with um, organisations in New Zealand and um, Ireland. Um, we're starting conversations with Uruguay and the USA, uh, but I think that there's a lot of other uh, potential organisations that, that can come into the mix when we're talking about how we can best uh, invest our um, uh, funding that we've got available for agricultural research in, in ways that we can have the best outcomes. Um, and potentially a, a global methane coalition is something that could have a job of coordinating all of the work that's happening across the planet in this space. Um, really just some food for thought at this stage, but keen to talk further. So thank you very much for listening.